going to get going um, uh, and dive into this in a little more detail. Um, actually, having slight little computer problem. Hopefully, it, hopefully it doesn't continue. Uh, but really, what we're going to cover today is uh, um, a, a brief outline of the Empower printer, uh, the industry, uh, potential uh, uh, marketing techniques. Um, so we'll go through some customer testimonials. At the very end, there's going to be a section that's going to be devoted to uh, uh, like a Q&A session. So I know you're going to have a lot of questions. If you want, go ahead and write them down as uh, as we continue on this uh, this webinar. But I'll make sure that I answer them all towards the end here. For those who aren't aware, my name is Adam Capri. I'm a key account manager here. Uh, at Anajet. And just a little background on myself. I've been with the company for about five years now, a little bit more now actually. And uh, I've seen this industry grow from being, well, basically nothing, uh, no technology exists, to all of a sudden now a, a dominant force in the direct uh, decorated apparel uh, industry. And we're at a point now where the technology's gotten uh, uh, even better. Uh, we had then a, specifically the Empower, which, which I'll discuss. So, like I said, here's our quick agenda. First things first, we'll go into the recap. We'll talk about the industry and its market. We'll look at some of the challenges um, that people face and some of the advantages of having garment printers. We'll talk about certain market specifics. Um, then go into the printer itself, and that's in both the technology behind it, how it all works, um, some of the more recent advancements in our i-series version of the Empower. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Sprint, too. We don't want to leave that thing out. It's one of our uh, better printers out there. Um, we'll talk about the, the economics of it, how it all makes sense. Uh, then we'll do some stories, and then, like I said, the Q&A at the very end. So I guess the question becomes, why direct-to-garment printing? Well, digital apparel printing is the future. Everything is going digital. Think of it in terms of, uh, remember how we used to have actual film in a camera, right? And now everything is digital. Uh, you don't have to you know, have overexposure or anything like that anymore. You just take the digital picture, download it onto your computer, and there you go. You have it. Print it right out on a, on a, uh, on a piece of paper. And it's the same kind of idea. Everything is going digital. Everything is, uh, is, is taking that next leap. Now, why? Because the quality is better. The details are better. So a lot of, a lot of industries, a lot of companies are jumping on the uh, digital garment uh, bandwagon because they're realizing that they, gotta be, they have to be able to offer more to their customers. They've got to be able to do more elaborate images. They've got to have more colors, all these different things. And it really becomes a point of just having to, just ha you, you have to diversify. You have to kind of change as the times change. And with technology, as we all know, it changes so rapidly that you have to be on the cutting edge. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, how Anajet can help you with that um, as the technology improves a little bit later on. But it really becomes a point of this is going to be the preferred method of printing garments because of the wide capabilities it gives you. There's also a continuous pricing pressure on all different products, services, offerings, things of that nature. There's also increased competition through web, social media. Now this one's a big one. It, we're no longer in the days of having uh, you just doing your local printing or local uh, uh, garment decoration for the local school. That school now can go on online and get it anywhere. It doesn't ma even matter if it's across the country. The World Wide Web is a giant mall, and everybody has access to it. So you have to find a way to d diversify. You have to find a way to separate yourself. And digital garment printing gives you that competitive edge. Now, you personally, why should you get into the uh, garment printing, digital garment printing? Well, let's take a quick recap of, of an overview of the industry. Right now, garment decoration in the United States is a $44 billion industry. Garment printing 
is a $23 billion segment of that industry. Okay, that's just across the nation. Today, garment printing is still 95% screen printing and slowly starting to creep away into digital garment printing. Okay, which means what? That we're at the very tip of the iceberg that there's a whole lot more that we can do and a whole lot more that we can go after. And the, the intensity is starting to ratchet up and the capabilities of the printer but also the market demands of the printer because the, the technology is getting out there and showing people what you truly can do with this type of equipment. But here's some of the main things. Now, just so that you're aware, before I start going into all of this stuff, a lot of these uh, slides and a lot of these things that we're going to go through, some of the statistics and everything, this is all, all this information that you see even on this screen right here, this is what we hear from our customers that call in. This is why they reach out to us. And I'm sure that at some point, in some way, you can look at this uh, uh, specific slide and sit there and say, that's one of the reasons why you're on this webinar. So keep that in mind. I mean, these these are these are things that that we have uh, we've heard from our current customer base, and it's why uh, why we're starting to address them. Um, and all of it, just on a side note, all these statistics that we show are all third party, so they're not uh, Anajet created. It's all stuff that we're gonna um, that we got from independent firms. But moving on. So what are the main things that we hear from our customers? First thing is production equipment can be costly. Um, what we mean by that is screen screen printing equipment, four color, uh, four station screen or six station, eight station, can be a costly investment. Not just in the equipment itself, but where you're going to put it and where you have to operate it. Also, older technology requires a steep learning curve. I'm not sure if any of you on here are screen printers. But screen printing is an art form. It truly is. Uh, the, the longer you do it, the better you get at it, uh, like most things. But these the people that are screen printing for 20 years, these guys are artists. They really are. They can make some pretty impressive things. But it only goes to show you that it's a, it's a steep learning curve. For any of you that have actually gone out and, and worked with screen printers in the past or currently screen, think about the difference between uh, maybe what you do versus your competitor, or maybe what uh, you who you outsource to versus another one. And I'll bet anything that the p person that's been doing it longer, you'll get higher quality results, faster fulfillment, all those things. Well, garment printing now takes that to a whole new level because the learning curve isn't there. Because really, what are we doing here, right? We're we're putting all of the manual override stuff that you have to do with screen printing and making it all at a push of a button. A lot of customers call us because smaller jobs equal low to zero margins. Why? Because it's costly to set up a small job on a screen print. Okay, so go and go and ask your screen printer how much a five shirt three color order would be. With setup fee and everything involved, you'll end up paying a significant amount. And if you're outsourcing that and you're playing the broker in that situation, what's your margin? Most people tend to turn those away. That's not an issue now with Manajet. You have a continuous need to attract new clients. That's probably one of the biggest ones. Customers come in here and say, we've been doing the same thing over and over and over again. And it's good, and we got our, our business, but the only way we're going to make more or do better is if we diversify. They need a competitive edge to lock in a high customer service quotient. What we mean by that is, what separates you from going from your customers going for with you or the the group down the street, they got to find a way to differentiate themselves, and you got to lock that in. Having the capability to do it all, one color, a thousand colors, one shirt, a thousand shirt, with the cost being the same and a high quality, keeps those customers coming back. With lead times and ship times, they prevent fast fulfillment. Why even bother with it? We all know that it's, I mean, how many people have ordered shirts and had uh, and, and heard, oh, it's going to take a week or two weeks to get back to you? You know how long it would take me to print 50 shirts? Under an hour. So 
So here's the solution, right? We just went through it just a little bit. You get a durable, high-volume direct-to-garmin printer. It's easy to learn, like I said before. It's not this manual putting, pushing down the right amount of ink, making sure that you're aligned perfectly, spending a, an hour getting all things set up. You put a shirt down, you load an image, and you press print. Here's the biggest secret in direct-to-garmin printing that I can tell you. The only concern that you have when you're printing and you want to get what the image on the screen looks like on the printer, right? The only thing you have to make sure of is that that image is high resolution, okay? Because the printer prints what it sees. So as long as the image is high resolution, you're in good shape, all right? You can, yeah, you can knock out colors, you can make things transparent, you can ad uh, adapt, you can change a lot of things. But in the end, high resolution is the difference between a high quality print and a low quality print. It's a predictable profit margin up to 75%. Now, there's no more, the more you order, the less it is. Although you could do that and continue that pricing, let's keep in mind that it costs you the same for one shirt that it does for 100 shirts per shirt. Right? And what I mean by that is this. To print a light shirt, say it costs you 20 cents worth of ink. Now, that could be 100 colors or one color. doesn't matter. It's all based off image size. All right, so if it's 20 cents for ink for one shirt, it's going to be 20 cents per shirt for 10 shirts. So there's a predictable, easy way to learn, hey, how much am I truly making on this? Attract all different types of businesses with samples, put their logos, campaign images on their shirt. Now, this is huge. And this is one thing that I'm going to take kind of go off on a little bit of a rabbit trail here because I've had some of the, the most, and I try to talk to my customers all the time specifically about how to use this concept. This marketing idea, I heard about it about four years ago. I've told all my customers, you know, that anybody that puts it into practice immediately makes an impact with their printer. And it's so simple. It's so simple. And the concept is so easy. Think about when you go to uh, buy a new car. What's the first thing that the car salesman does? He wants you to get, he wants you to in the car to do a test drive, right? Okay, why? because that puts the product in your hand. You feel that visceral feel behind the car, driving it. You imagine yourself driving that car. Okay, it's that kind of concept. It is the biggest sales tool for you that you could ever use. And here's how you do it for your customers. Every week, identify 20 companies and I, there'll be a list of industries that you can go after later on in this, and I'll be happy to send them to you as a template so you know where to go. But every week, identify 20, 20 companies. It could be a bar, restaurant, school, high school, um, police department, fire department, wherever you think, commercial area, wherever you think they, that they would buy shirts, and print out 20 shirts. Now, we have Thanksgiving coming up, so say you printed a big turkey. You know, you found a turkey online. Um, gobble gobble on the, on the below it or whatever, but you grab that shirt, you printed a turkey, and right below it you highlighted a few things that separate yourself from the com competition. So you write under there, unlimited colors, 24 hour turnaround time, customization and personalization, no minimum orders, and then you put that down. Now why are you highlighting those things? You're highlighting those things because those separate yourself from your competitors, right? Okay, so your screen printer can't do those things. Okay, your screen printer has to have a minimum order. They have a limitation on their colors. They can't customize and individualize each uh, each each personal shirt. Okay, they can't uh, uh, do a 24-hour turnaround time. So you're highlighting why you're better and why you're more flexible and where you're com com you have that competitive edge. Now, you print these 20 shirts out. Obviously, put all your contact information, phone, website, whatever you got. And you go drop these shirts off to 20 different businesses. And do it once a week and highlight 20 separate companies. You are putting the sample in the customer's hand. You're putting that product in the customer's hand. You're giving them an idea, hey, this is what I can do for you. This is what I can, this is what I can provide. And it's brilliant because it's showing them something tangible. Now, they may not need it right then and there. And this is what my 
an old customer of mine told me. He goes, they may not need it right then and there, but if you hand out a business card or you hand out a, um, a flyer or something like that, those are the kind of marketing materials that end up in the trash. Okay, they end up down the side of your seat. They're you know so, sitting on a desk somewhere. I'm looking at my desk right now. I have about 30 business cards. I have a, can't remember the last time I looked at them. But nobody throws away a shirt. So whether that shirt sits on their desk or whether that shirt ends up in their closet or when, whether that shirt ends up in the um, in the laundry bag or in a dresser, point is that shirt's always going to find its way out. Nobody throws away a shirt. It's a constant marketing tool that keeps being you, you know looked at. So whether they buy it, or they, they place an order right there on the spot, or they place the order a month down the road, the point is they now know who to go to, and they know that you can do better than everybody else. This is a brilliant, brilliant tactic. The customer that told me about this said that he did this once a week for the first 90 days he owned his parent. For the first three, mo uh, three months, he highlighted 20 companies. In the first three months, he generated enough income to pay for his printer in full. He paid back his investment. It's an, it's an amazingly brilliant idea. And on the flip side of it, you're wondering, well, what's your marketing budget for something like that? Well, we can all get white t-shirt blanks for, what, a buck fifty, two dollars $2? And you can put $0.20 cents worth of ink on it. For round number's sake, let's call it $2 per shirt is your cost. So your marketing budget is $40 a week. That's it. And you have the tools right there. You don't need to generate business cards. You don't need to generate uh, flyers. All you got to do is use the shirt as your, as your business card. And he even told me, he even told me when he was I explaining this to me, he said, Adam, if you had, because we were at a trade show, he goes, if you had, if you hand out 100 business cards, how many people are actually going to keep them? But if you hand out 100 shirts, Everybody's going to keep them. So you know what I started doing? I started printing all my shirts with my contact info on it and giving it to people because I knew they wouldn't throw away a shirt, but they sure as heck would throw away a business card. So it worked for me, and it can work for you. And I try to explain this to all my customers who buy uh, the printers from me. This is an integral part of marketing, and if you can take this one, anything away from this um, webinar presentation, when you buy your direct-to-garment printer, do that. It'll make all the difference in the world. You'll start to get to a point where you'll, you'll run out of different companies to go to, but that's a good thing. And for some of you on, the, on this webinar that might be pretty good at sales or pretty good and personable, you'll probably pick up business right on the spot. But don't be surprised, a month down the road, three weeks down the road, you start getting phone calls from people that need shirts for their softball team, you know, shirts for the, uh, uh, the bar and restaurant that needs um, something for St. Patrick's Day or something. Okay, so moving on. Narrow zero turnaround time and personalization, like I said. Eliminate lead time, ship times, and middlemen for the, from the equation. Um, I get people that uh, are the broker guy, the, the promotional products person that goes to different outsources, but you know that whole industry spawned from a uh, uh, a, a, a lack of room and money to be your own screen printer. The promotional products industry, just so that you guys are all aware, covers everything from like foam fingers to uh, mouse pads to t-shirts. But you know 90% of the promotional product industry is garments? And people, that, that whole industry spawned because people didn't have and didn't want screen printing equipment set up in their, you know, home or have to have an office building. Well, now with a garment printer, you can set it up in your garage or in an office building. You can set it up anywhere. The footprint's only three feet by three feet or four feet by four feet. So utilize this now. Why outsource your profits? So, so just some basic operational advantages. Garment printers, they're easy to learn and operate. Many startups use. You know, compared to screen printing, the downside, the uh, this, the the learning curve is is practically nothing. Not to say that you won't uh, need some help and training, but you know, use the uh, use the tools that you're at, at at your advantage, and I guarantee you, you'll uh, you'll be a pro in no time. Minimal footprint, like I said, only three feet by four feet. 
Uh, differentiate your business like we discussed, sample shirts with every order. As little as a 90-day payoff per our customers, and that's not a pie-in-the-sky type thing. And I know we, we kind of there's some redundancy. I went over a lot of that stuff, but it 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 really, you know, it, it's important to to reiterate it. How powerful uh, creating samples is, even for all you guys who are currently in the sign industry or currently in a in a segment of uh, the, the digital printing industry or 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 garment decoration embroidery. Imagine throwing in a free T-shirt sample with every order that you get, letting the person know, oh, by the way, I can do garments now, too. I can do digitally printed garments. Okay, so like I mentioned before, all our statistics come from third-party independent uh, companies we have no affiliation with other than uh, we provided them with the information they needed. We put this on here just so that you can see where Anajet is. Um, just so that you can kind of get an idea of our market position and what we're all about as a company. Anajet has a, uh, a goal, and our goal is to be synonymous with direct-to-garment printing. And what I mean by that is this. A lot of people, when they, uh, they want a, a soda, they'll say, I'll take a Coke, because Coke is synonymous with soda, right? It's the most popular soft drink ever. Well, we want to be synonymous with direct garment printing. Instead of people saying, I need a direct garment printer, we want people to say, I need an Anajet. Okay, we want to be synonymous with it. So look at uh, our, that slide on the left-hand side. Now, this was done by IT Strategies. You can actually see the link down at the bottom left-hand corner, and you can, uh, by all means, go on their website, check out their information. But this is what they estimated at Anajet's market share across the world that we had a 45% market share. That means four, four and a half out of 10 printers sold were Anajets across the world. Now, in the US, uh, North American market share, we have a 60% market share. And we actually anticipate that, because uh, our, our sales have increased uh, dramatically over the past few years, that it's even higher. They estimate that six out of 10 printers sold were Anajets. So when you're dealing with us, you're dealing with the, the, the top company in the industry. And you don't get to that position unless you have good printers and good customer service. All right, so I'm going to go through a few different industries right now. Now, these industries, uh, um, there's going to be a lot of uh, crossover. So you, this is, this, if you're not specifically in this industry, still so listen up because this is a, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, stuff that will relate to your specific industry as well. But first and foremost, from a commercial printer standpoint, all you sign makers, people that use wide format printers, offset printing, anybody that's ever done digital printing, let me explain real quickly the differences, but also the how similar things are. Anybody that's used those type of equipment, the Anajet equipment, although different, incredibly similar. Digital printing is digital printing in the end, right? Similar maintenance needs, capping stations, wiper blades, things like that. It's all pretty much the basic stuff. Print heads resting over there, little seals and everything. So if you have a good idea of how that works, you're going to understand the mechanisms that are in the printer. Similar softwares. You understand RIPs, which means for you it's a pretty fast learning curve to pick that stuff up. All RIPs, although different, accomplish the same task and you can and you understand why they're there. You also get and are understanding some of the market expectations that I was talking about earlier. Faster turnaround times. Can't afford to turn away business. Outsourcing, uh, avoid outsourcing whenever possible. You want to be that one-stop shop. I had a customer um, just a couple months back bought his printer. The whole reason why he bought his printer, this is it. He was sending his jobs to a friend of his that owned a direct-to-garment printer across town. Okay, was outsourcing to him. Well, that friend went out and bought a wide format printer. And now all of his customers that he was doing signs for, that he thought he developed relationships with, were going to the other customer to do their garments, or the other, uh, his other, his buddy, to do their garments and their signs. And he couldn't let that happen. He was legitimately losing business. So he had to buy a direct garment printer to get the ball rolling. 
you understand the idea between customization and personalization, and the reality is you being able to do it versus outsourcing it means that you get a bigger piece of the pie. Now, screen printers, embroiderers, some of my favorite. Think about your current market. For all you screen printers out there, embroiderers, you probably have your current customer base, and uh, it's good. You know, they go to you. You're doing well. If you're trying to increase your revenues, you're looking at different ways to do it. But guess what? There's a lot of people doing the same thing you're doing. I mean, look at that last slide I was showing you that said 95% uh, of garment decoration is done through screen printing. Well, how do you differentiate yourself? Then think about all your competition. Did you know right now I can go online and within 10 minutes order any shirt I want with any design I want and have it shipped to me overnight? I can have it here tomorrow for about $30. $30 I can do that right now. That's your competition. Okay? Especially for these younger crowds that are out there. They don't look at, oh, I'll go to a screen printer and get uh, these 25 shirts printed up. They go online, buy a shirt, or buy 10 of the same shirt, and they pay 20 bucks per shirt because it's convenient. And because they can do anything that they want with that shirt. The days of large orders, one colors, that works for companies like Hurley or uh, you know Abercrombie or all these different stores out there that sell you know a million shirts of one design that works but that's a competitive market and things are starting to become more personalized and customized and things are starting to become more convenient and direct garment printing gives you that that edge now I'm not saying completely turn your back on your current customer base and that end of the market always go after stuff that's very profitable for you, and it can be, especially when you do those types of volumes. Um, but on a per shirt basis, being able to customize each individual shirt and doing it one at a time, two at a time, five shirts at a time, and going after that type of business, your margins are a lot bigger. Okay, You sell, you can, you can legitimately sell what, a, a shirt for $25 that costs you two to three bucks to make. Go after that kind of business. It's kind of that whole idea of work smarter and harder. Don't just work harder. You know, work smart. Faster learning curve for you, though, specifically with uh, screen printers and embroiders because you understand the idea behind digitizing and modifying your graphics as well as the colors and how that affects the colors that are printed on the garments. For example, you guys know just as well as anybody that if you're printing a black shirt and you've got to have yellow on it, you've got to have some sort of underbase. Because right? if you print yellow on a black, the black's a more dominant color, and it's going to shine right through that yellow. You won't be able to see it. So you need a white underbase to put down to put that yellow on top of it to get what that yellow that you want. Now, specifically, what do you what what are you immediately making an impact in? Saying yes to everything that comes in, right? One, ten, fifty shirts. Never turning anybody away. Embroiderer is being able to print a sample on demand. That's faster than a sell out, no backing, no hooping, no signing threads, no cutting, trimming, all of that good stuff. None of it, all of it's gone. Print a sample. Print a sample that takes you less than a minute to print that'll have a higher margin than your embroidery business. Like I said, don't shy away from that side of your business. But let's look at an industry that is actually giving you bigger margins and shorter amount of times. There's one operator versus two or three. Enable full color digital prints at high volumes. That last one I want to highlight. You know, for so long garment printing was strictly thought of as a uh, only for short orders. Right? But now we got our Empower 10. Our Empower 10 has the capability to, because of its speed, to compete with screen printing orders up to three, four hundred uh, piece orders and be very competitive price-wise and uh, time-wise and convenience and ease, to be honest with you. I had a customer that uh, his lease was up on his building, a big screen printer, been doing it for 20-plus years. Lease was up on his building, didn't want to renew his lease, sold all his equipment, 
all the screen printing equipment. Okay, bought two Empower 10s, got a smaller building right in the downtown area, and now does all his fulfillment on two Empower 10s. Went completely digital. All right, promotional products. I, I, I mentioned to you guys a little bit uh, before, for all of you people that are in promotional products. And what I like most about you guys is promotional products, people are salespeople. They have to get out there and pound the pavement. So they are usually ones that kind of get, uh, get the ball rolling a little bit faster. But keep in mind, like I said earlier, the promotional product industry is a byproduct of the technology that was available at the time, i.e. screen printing. Right? Screen printing was a, uh, a, a messy... Uh, process that needed a lot of room and was costly and because of that the promotional products s branched out and started going to screen printers to get their jobs done as opposed to doing it themselves because of the cost and burden that was associated with it. Well now that cost and, and, and burden is no longer there because the, you can legitimately have a garment printer sitting on a desk right where you're at right now doing all your jobs for you and instead of outsourcing your profits you're generating your own income, doing your own printing, and it's not like it's taking you any longer than uh, you know you would do by if you had to outsource it. And you get why customers want speed, customizing, personalizing. It's those added benefits that take a garment from being twelve dollars a shirt to eighteen dollars a shirt. Customers are always seeking a greater variety in products, colors, and designs. You know, we can't stress so much as, too much of this personalization aspect of it. Well, one lady I work with, she decided that every photo shirt she printed, right, she'd print a photo right on a shirt with her garment printer. She would also include a mouse pad with a photo on it. Okay, really inexpensive, but she printed on a mouse pad with a, her Anajet um, with a photo on it. This simple one little tiny freebie that she got, not only locked in the customer uh, repeat, the customer came back consistently to her because of her good quality and service, but more often than not, she got a call from that same customer, and not only did mom want one of those mouse pads, but dad did, and grandma did, and sister did, and all those things, so that they could have something personalized to them that they could look at every day. As it is right now, I'm looking at a, uh, a digitally printed photograph of my, me, myself and my wife sitting on my desk. You know, I should have that on a mouse pad. I should have that on a, on a shirt, something that, uh, that screams, you know, my family. You have a unique advantage, though, str uh, strategically, because distributors already know how to sell to survive. You, you get that idea. I know I mentioned it. But the difference is specifically are you go from a margin of 25 35% to 65, 75%. So again, you're working, imagine doing half the amount of business that you're doing and making the same amount of money or doing the same amount of business that you're doing and doubling your profit. That's essentially what that is. Virtually eliminate all those lead times and all those fulfillment problems and the customers that uh, you potentially uh, lose because you, who you're outsourcing to isn't giving you what you need when you need it. And of course, creating that sample on demand idea, which I think is one of the better, uh, better marketing tactics out there. So I threw this slide in right after this, just because I wanted to show you all the different things that you can do with a garment printer outside of just printing garments. Okay, besides just doing shirts, sweatshirts, pants, all the different fabrics that you can print on, we've also had a lot of success printing on uh, uh, canvas, hats. Uh, glass, wood, even metal. We've even uh, come up with ways to add foil effects to give a metallic look, even 3D printing. All sorts of different things that you can tinker around with and play with uh, to add a little bit extra for your customers and give them a little bit bigger uh, options to choose from, a little, more, a little larger options to choose from. Okay, so the idea that I said to you earlier about uh, highlighting your 20 different companies. Um, if you guys need this, I'll be happy to send it to you. You can email me after this is over, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll forward this off to you. Um, but this is from SGIA. Uh, they're a major player in the uh, digital garment, well, just in the digital imaging industry. 
um, they do a lot of surveys, a lot of stuff, and they, rec they, they highlighted these areas, primary markets reported for steady growth within the next three years, the top markets listed in bold. So what does that mean to you? It means that these are the customer, these are the places that you go to drop off those free shirts, those sample shirts, right? You go to retail stores, interior designers, corporate branding, government, ad agencies, nonprofits, athletics, manufacturing. All these places have been identified by SGIA as the people that buy shirts. So anytime you're looking for who's my 20 companies that I'm going to go to, reference this list. And like I said, I'd be happy to send it to you afterwards. Okay, Empower. Let's talk about this printer. Now, the Empower is the most advanced direct-to-garment printer currently in the industry. Okay, it's the fastest for one. You can print a shirt in as little as 15, 20 seconds. Has a rapid return on investment. But in addition to the Empower, we also give all of our customers first-class technical support, training firmware, and software upgrades, all free. Okay, why do we do that? It's not just because we're nice people. It's because we recognize the value of all of these services because it makes you more effective with the printer, and the more effective you are with the printer, the more ink you buy, and the more printers you come back and buy in the future. It's almost a way for us to invest in you. All right, this is a big, big... Uh, mantra, for lack of a better word, that we have around Anajet. Giving all of our customers free lifetime technical support, free lifetime software upgrades, free lifetime firmware upgrades, and free training. The more successful you are with your printer with our help, the better it is for both parties. So we really put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so, like I said, endless possibilities with extended media, foil, 3D art. Now, another just something to realize. Anajet garment printers are the only garment printers made, manufactured, serviced, engineered all here in the United States. Okay, every other company out there you're dealing with a dealer and distributor. I'm not knocking them. They're doing a good job and they do their they do their business well. But when you're dealing with the manufacturer, you're dealing with the people that actually make it. Any parts, components, inks, things of that nature that you need, they're all on site in house. Okay, you know, you're not waiting for anything. So recently we upgraded the Empower to the I-Series. Now the I-Series did a lot of different things. But essentially what we did is we improved on our closed loop ink delivery system. We put something in the printer called a closed loop ink delivery circulation system. Right. It sounds complicated, but essentially what it means is this. Closed loop means that everything is sealed off inside the printer. Now, why do we do that? Well, because any air contamination, anything that touches this ink while it's in the printer, causes the ink to thicken and harden. And when it thickens and harden, it clogs the printer. So we seal off everything, cartridges, inner workings of the machine. There's even seals around the tips of the printhead to prevent it from any air contaminants touching it. Great. Now, that's a big leap. But we also recognized that while the ink is in there, in the printer, if it sits too long, the ink will legitimately just start to settle in the lines. We call it settling. And if you looked at it, after you let it sit, you would even be able to see that the pigment of the ink would be down at the bottom, and then it'd be very clear on top. It would look kind of milky almost. Um, and that's the water and the pigment separating, right, because it's water-based ink. So what we did on that addition, what we additionally did is we decided, okay, we're going to put a, we're going to put pumps in the printer that circulate the ink inside the printer. It doesn't exit the printer, it just circulates on itself. It constantly keeps the ink mixed up and moving. So we're always at the level of mixture that we want it to be without the customer having to use the printer every day. Okay, this is a huge leap in direct-to-garment printing technology. As I'm sure you all are aware, you've heard probably some horror stories about people getting their ink and their printer all clogged up and they can't print and this it's because they don't use it or don't do the maintenance that's required and that maintenance was done it had to be done often with old printers done almost every day in some cases but now we don't have to do that because of the cert the closed loop circulating ink system okay 
So what does that mean for you? It means, well, just on the surface, things that you'll appreciate when you have the printer means that you can fill the printer quicker. You get a better ink flow, a flow while printing, avoid any banding, dropout, things of that nature, because we're controlling the uh, viscosity of the ink, like I was telling you, with the circulation system. Improved print quality, which means even better color fidelity, which means what you see on screen is what you're going to get on the printer. Less ink and flush consumption when flushing and filling and normal maintenance routines. Basically, any time a customer had, before this closed loop circulating ink system, any time a customer had a, did let it sit and it did get clogged up, they'd have to flush the entire system, soak the print head, do all these different things, and then put the ink in. But every time they did that, they wasted cleaning solution and ink. Okay. Well, with that circulation system, those steps are gone, which means for you, a lower cost of ownership because you won't have to waste the ink that's in the lines and in the print heads to make it just to, you know, continue printing. We also beefed up some of the components. You know, we do a lot of testing here before the printers go out. I mean, it's got to pass a rigorous, rigorous uh, um, uh, testing process. Every step is covered. Everything that we do is covered before we even send out each individual printer. And we recognized in some of the printers that, you know, certain components needed to be more robust, more durable. So here's what we did. And we added more reliable check valves for the new design for basically for sustainable performance, something that is going to last you long term. We improve the maintenance station for its durability. Okay, more robust wiper arm, new wiper arm actuator guidance design. And we're getting into really technical terms here, but essentially how the uh, the wiper wipes the nozzle. That's what that is. Approved firmware for efficiency and ease of use. That firmware now tracks how much ink is in the lines, tracks how much ink is in your cartridge, and how much it's costing you per print. New improved efficiency clean routines easier to use time startup fill options. Uh, we also, in the RIP, added a super fine print mode, which is uh, gives you a super high uh, uh, DPI, which allows you to print on uh, substrates like metal and wood and get a much clearer picture. OK, so like I said, we're committed to durability and ease of use. Okay. It's why we give our customers free lifetime software and firmware upgrades, free training, free lifetime technical support. There's no hidden setup fees. There's no mandatory site visit. You can set up and begin printing yourself. No other uh, Garmin printer can offer that. All right. We give all of this stuff for you because we're here for you and we want you to be successful. But this is not a piece of equipment that requires person on-site training to set up. I mean, it, legitimately, anybody can pull the printer out put in the ink cartridges, and within 15 minutes be printing a shirt. It's really that simple. Now, that being said, if you want the training, if you want on site, if you want uh, to come here and get trained, we can arrange for that. That's not a problem at all. And we encourage it. Come out, we can, we can lower that learning curve. But we built this printer to be e user friendly and easy to operate. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're going after it. We don't want you to sit there and have a you know, a couple month long learning curve. We want you to be up and printing and getting what you want day one. And that was the idea of building this. So we also have our new software, which is uh, part of our, it, it, we call it our Anarip. Um, uh, this particular software, uh, for all you guys out there that are, that are into it, uh, you can, it can accept JPEG, PNG, TIFF, Adobe files, all of that good stuff. Just drag and drop it right in there. You can actually, eliminate colors in it, take out, add transparency. It's got that ink cost calculator. You can adjust the brightness, the saturation, the contrast, things of that, uh, the new super fine, like I mentioned. Um, there's also an LCD preview on the printer, a little control panel on the set of the printer that has eight gigs of memory where you can store jobs in there so they don't have to go through the RIP process prior to printing. You can just already have it pre-ripped and pre-designated on your control panel. Um, <clears throat> but one of the most impressive things that I think, uh, and it's kind of hard to explain, but we have this feature called TrueView. Okay? And TrueView gives you uh, an accurate representation of what the print's going to look like when it comes out onto, on the printer. 
So you can load the image that you want it to look like, then give yourself the true view, which is that right screen, that right uh, um, uh, uh, butterfly image on the right there, and that'll show you what the image is going to look like based off your white ink under base. And you can actually control how much white ink you put under certain colors to get the vibrancy and things that you want. It's kind of hard to explain. It's a lot easier if you were just, you know, had it there right in front of you. But essentially the whole idea is we're trying to limit the amount of ink used so that you have a lower cost to produce, but at the same time getting the desirable colors and results that you want out of the print. It's really kind of cool and uh, I recommend you you know, use it and you use the tech support guys here to uh, to maximize its effectiveness. Could be the difference between a print costing you a dollar in ink or seventy cents. All right, so we have two Empowers. We have the Empower Ten and the Empower Five. The only difference between the two is the speed. They look exactly the same. They have all the same features. Uh, they, I mean, if you put them right next to each other, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference until you opened up the hood. Um, but on the Empower 10, like I was saying before, you can print a shirt in about 20 seconds. On the Empower 5, that same shirt would take about 40. And you can see as we go down. Now, a lot of people look at it and go, well, you know, I only need 200 shirts a day, or, or I, I only do about 500 shirts a week, say. Right? The Empower 5 can totally handle 500 shirts a week, no problem. The difference will be this. If I'm doing... 500 shirts in 8 hours on the MP5. On the 10, I can do 500 shirts in 4 hours. So you have to find out exactly what your time is worth. Um, time is money. And uh, if it's worth it to you to go up and get the MP10, I suggest doing it. That all being said, we get a lot of customers that will buy the 5 and upgrade to the 10 as their business grows. Um, we have a great upgrade program that we can talk about more offline. So keep that in mind too. I would say about one out of three of my customers ends up get, buying the five and then upgrade into the ten down the road, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's re let's briefly go over the Anajet Sprint for all of you guys. That's, this is the printer that put us on the map. Okay, it's a top selling direct to garment printer. And there's, we have thousands of customers worldwide. It was first re uh, released in June of 2009, so right now, currently, yeah, it's a little dated. It's not the Empower, but it's still a very, very viable and production-ready uh, printer. It also has a little bit smaller footprint, and it's lighter. It's only 82 pounds, so if you guys ever want to take it to uh, on the road or anything like that or travel, the Sprint's a good option for that because it's real easy to move around. Um, it has a fast ROI. Uh, customers report uh, five months to a week, and high quality. You can print high, just as high quality as in the Empire as you can with the Sprint on shirts, bags, and other substrates that we were talking about. Metal, glass, wood, all that good stuff. Here's the print speeds of the, of the Sprint. White shirts take typically 60 to 90 seconds. Dark shirts, two to three minutes. So you can see the difference in time and speed, like I was saying with the Empowers and the Sprint. Um, the Sprint's going to take a little bit longer, but it's just really a product of it being a little bit older of technology. Still gets you the high quality, but, you know, realistically, you're going to get a dark shirt. So you're going to get about 15, 20 an hour, all right? Um, time is money. It's up to you. If that works for you, then, yeah, let's go for the Sprint. It's a low cost of investment. Get the job done, um, uh, and we can, you know, can talk more offline about uh, some of the particulars, but it's a fantastic printer. And the thing will last you. I mean, this, these, these things are workhorses. This printer is a, 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 one of the most reliable ones ever made. Uh, now, again, all these print speeds that you saw on the Empower and now on the Sprint, all were done by SGIA. Um, that you can actually check out down at the bottom, the SGIA.org. All third party so that we didn't, uh, you know, show you that, hey, we're, this is, you know, we're not just saying it. These are the speeds. These are the independent third-party speeds. So let's talk about the business case. And I want to point out that I, when I was making this, I put very high numbers on cost because I wanted to be very conservative in my estimate. Your numbers may actually come out a little bit lower than this uh, in, in terms of cost to produce, but let's shoot for high numbers just to give you a good idea. 
A fully loaded cost of a printed white shirt, two to three dollars depending on blank size and graphic size. Let's use three bucks. With an average retail price of anywhere from 15 to 18. Now these these specific numbers I got, the, the pricing portion of it I got from a, a customer of mine, um, and this is what he charges. So he has 15 to 18 dollars, so we're going to use a 15 dollar number. It was a gross profit of 12 dollars per shirt. With a gross profit of 12 dollars per shirt, on the Sprint, you can pay for the printer in 1,500 shirts, 5, 25, 10, 35. The key to success on this is using the marketing tactics that we discussed earlier. I have no problem believing that any person that's listening to this right now, by using those, those simple marketing tools that we discussed, within 90 days could sell 5,000 shirts, maybe even more. I really believe that if you go out there and hit it and do it once a week like we discussed, you could easily do that kind of thing. So keep that in mind. And even if these numbers are higher than you think, you know, maybe maybe you sell the shirt for ten dollars. You're still making seven bucks a shirt. Okay? And and at five thousand at five thousand shirts, that's you know, thirty five what is that, thirty five thousand dollars that you're making. That is paying for an Empower, uh, an Empower Sprint, an Empower 10, 5, whichever one. There's a significant amount of profit. That's $35,000 in 90 days. I don't think anybody would have a problem hitting that. All right, I put this slide in. This actually just happened. Anajet and Ford Motor Company uh, teamed up uh, recently. Uh, Ford approached us about um, doing some on-the-spot on t-shirt designs, and you can actually kind of see it. It's, Excuse my bragging here. We were pretty excited about this, but you can see the line down that bottom right-hand picture. That's the line of people waiting to get shirts. That top picture is all the people that are crowded around the booth. Those top two ones, and that what bottom one on the left is the guy on the left is Tim. He's our uh, trade show manager, and uh, the guy on the right I don't know who he is, but he uh, uh, he's holding up a shirt he recently got with the Empower in the background. And we just printed shirts for them all day, and they had uh, um, all their cars on. But the idea was is they wanted people to come to this trade show, check out all the new things that Ford is doing, get themselves a custom shirt. Uh, it was pretty cool. And you can see the interest just by having people on. Henry Landau is a great customer of ours. Uh, we work a lot with him to talk about different ways, uh, different successes he had and how we can share. Uh, this is what he had to say. Um, he had geek gross $250,000 in 17 months. Now he originally bought the Sprint and it took him approximately five months to achieve ROI. Uh, they feel so strongly about the machine that they say it prints money. And then obviously you couldn't pay us to replace this machine until the Empower came out. We, he got the Empower 5. And they love the Empower. And they've printed over 2,000 shirts since receiving the new i-series three weeks ago with outstanding results. Now, this is a quick update down at the bottom. Uh, Henry grossed $70,000 in the last two months with a 70% margin. That was as, as of uh, September 3rd. Um, pretty impressive stuff, what he's been able to do. Uh, but he's no different than anybody else. He has the he just took the bull by the horns and and decided to run with it. Creative promotions is one of my uh, uh, he's actually turned into a real dear dear friend of mine. Um, been a great customer for a long time. But he finished his full production run on an Empower Five. They ran 250 of the attached graphics in five hours. You see that little butterfly heart. They had a zero percent fallout rate. Now think about that for a second. 250 shirts printed, not one was thrown in the trash. Screen printers don't even do that. Now, before, when when uh, Creative Promotions got had this printer, uh, at that time they didn't have the ink cost estimate, but he estimated it at about 19 cents. Okay, now he could uh, go online or go through a software and it would tell him exactly. But he basically had a dollar 45 for each shirt and 19 cents worth of ink. He pay. He has uh, people, uh, kids come in after school, after school job, at ten dollars an hour. So he factored in. He had twenty cents in labor per shirt for a total cost of a dollar eighty-four. He sold each shirt for thirteen dollars. 
which gave him a profit of eleven dollars and sixteen cents at two hundred and fifty dollars two thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars profit in five hours that's impressive now not every job's like that but that's a really good idea of what the potential is if you get out there and get that business in if you did it five days a week, 200, he would make $725,000 in profit. Don't we all wish, right? <laughs> but uh, Chuck now owns four Anajet printers. Eastern Shore Science, another one of my customers. His name's Andy. He's a great guy. Lives in this tiny little town in Virginia called Cape Charles, about 1,200 people in there in that town. He's a one-man shop, does all local business, doesn't really do anything online. Uh, originally was in the sign industry, routing, vinyl cutting. Bought an Empower 5, upgraded to a 10 late last year. Um, and overnight, the NHN printer caused a 35% increase in all business. Uh, in June of 2012, he had $21,000 in total sales. IHS Printing, another customer of mine that's actually local to Anajet and goes to Mesa. Um, he has four Anajet printers in his shop, and he said the MP10 has improved productivity tenfold, so much that they had to buy more heat presses just to keep up. And you can learn all about this at the uh, the different links that are on your screen right now, the blogs and stuff like that that we do. There's actually a great video that Jason talks about his printers. Uh, I think it's about 10 minutes long if you get a chance to watch it. Okay, before we get into Q&A, just so that you guys are know, this is where Anajet's going to be. We're going to be in China from November 18th through the 20th, then Sign World Atlantic City, December 21st through the 23rd. Um, you can check us out uh, at anajet.com trade shows. Uh, we're also going to have another webinar on December 4th, and we have weekly live customer training in Costa Mesa HQ. Uh, so, so those are some of the things that we got going on through the end of the year. But let's jump into the Q&A. So uh, there's a few different places that you can type it. There's a chat window. There's a questions window. You can actually type it personally to me without anybody seeing it. But if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them right now. Uh, Pre-treatment. OK. Uh, Pre-treatment. For those who aren't aware, Pre-treatment is essentially a primer for paint. You know how when you print on, uh, say you're printing a, a, a wall in your house, you put a primer coat down, and then you uh, uh, put the, tr the, the, the paint down, right? And then the paint makes it look nice and vibrant. That's essentially what pre-treatment is. It's like a primer for paint. It allows the white ink specifically to look very vibrant. Now, you only have to pre-treat when you're printing with white ink. Um, if you don't, uh, the whiting won't be as vibrant and you may not get the colors that you want. So pre-treatment is an important process. Now, just so that you're aware, we've been approached by a few companies that are starting to uh, consider offering pre-treated shirts. There's also one company out there that you can buy pre-treated shirts from. Uh, their website is dtgready.com. Um, there are pre-treatment machines that are out there, and most people use a Wagner spray gun uh, to spray it down on there. Um, the Pre-treatment, out of all things, probably takes the biggest learning curve um, that people have. So utilize us, and we'll show you how to do it. It's not that it can't be done, and uh, it's not that you need these big pre-treatment machines. You just might need a little guidance. So we're happy to help with that. Uh, Let's see, what is the warranty on the printhead? Um, the print, oh, the printer and the printhead. Mike, good question. So like I was saying, you get free lifetime tech support, free lifetime software upgrades, free lifetime firmware upgrades, and the free training. The warranty on the printer says one year for all components in the printer outside of consumable items, OK? Um, so all the major components, boards, you know, maintenance stations, it's all one year. Uh, the printheads themselves have a three-month warranty because technically a printhead is a consumable item. Um, and however much we'd like to just sit there and say you get a one-year warranty on it, the reality is, is that unfortunately sometimes people neglect their printer, which damages their printhead, and it's just that we can we can only go so long. Now, the printheads on the on the uh, Empower are new printheads called the Rico Gen 4 printheads. They're the most industrial 
print heads in its class. They also have what's called the fastest firing frequency in its class. Uh, essentially what that means is it can spit out more ink than other printers in its class, which is why we have uh, the print head speed, the, the, the print speeds that we have. But these are industrial grade print heads that are meant to handle this kind of ink and meant to handle this type of usage. We are not a modified paper print head. Okay, an Epson print head, we're not that. That is a paper print head that is meant to saturate paper that is being pushed to its limits to saturate a shirt kind of like putting diesel fuel in an unleaded engine. It doesn't work. We are putting diesel fuel in a diesel engine. That's why our print heads last longer. That's why they're more industrial. That's why your prints uh, are, are faster. And that's why the printer itself is more robust. Because if there's one thing I can, you know, we talked about the marketing side of it. But let me just break this down real briefly for you. I want you all to buy an Anajet, so let me say that up front. But if you're going to buy a garment printer, your best bet is to buy a printer that was designed to be a garment printer. Don't buy a modified paper printer, okay? Buy a printer that was designed to be a garment printer. For the same reason I just said, you don't want diesel, diesel fuel in your unleaded engine, okay? You want diesel fuel in your diesel engine, and that's essentially what it is. Okay. Uh, Bill asks, are you able to print on dry fit and similar materials? Bill, yeah, we are. A um, couple caveats on that. Any synthetic fabric, polyester, spandex, nylon, that sort of thing, when it's lighter colors, meaning whites or pastels, no problem at all. Currently, white ink doesn't really like the dark synthetic, so like black, right? Black, 100% poly. We've seen some rumblings out there. Different uh, companies have approached us about a white ink that works on black synthetics. Off the printer, it looks great. But we haven't seen desirable wash results, so we haven't put that out there yet. Okay, But it is something that we're looking into. When we print it, like I said, dark with the white ink, it looks good, but when we wash it, it fades, so we're not marketing it. Something that we're working on, but for right now, limit yourself to lighter colored fabrics. Uh, how long does a shirt need to be heat pressed? Chad, good question. Okay, light shirts can be heat pressed for 30 seconds. Dark shirts need to be heat pressed for 90 seconds. Okay. You can also take a light shirt and cure it for 90 seconds as well. Um, but if you want, for faster speeds, up the temperature to 356, 30 seconds, and you're in good shape. Uh, Renee, I'm not sure if I understand your question. It said, where is Sign World? Again, oh, Atlantic City. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's in, it's in Atlantic City. I see what you're saying there. Okay. Uh, Sergio asks, is 300 DPI okay for high res? Sergio, on a, on a, uh, on, on a garment printer, 300 DPI, uh, uh, when you're making the actual file, yes, you're good. Uh, when you're actually printing, you'll use a higher DPI, uh, probably more like 600, uh, but the RIP will take care of that for you. But when you're actually design having the file in Photoshop or Illustrator, Corel, wherever you're at, 300 DPI, totally cool. But check out the actual amount of pixels that you have, because you can have a JPEG that's uh, 72 by 72 that's 300 DPI. So make it make it. You want to make sure that you're you're, you're still high resolution. Um, and can it print on the sleeves? Yes, it can print anywhere on the shirt. The printer can print anywhere you want. Uh, it can print on the uh, sleeves, collar, shoulder, uh, all that good stuff. Um, Misty asked you, do you have a trade-in on, hey, Misty, uh, do you have trade-in on uh, T-Jet 2? Misty, you know what? I don't think I do anymore. I'm sorry. Um, we really just don't have any use for them. You're probably better off trying to sell that on uh, eBay or something. Probably get more for your money. Uh, Renee, is it going to be a trade show? Can we get training while we're there? Um, Renee, we, it's going to be just a trade show, so there won't be any opportunities for training. But if you need training, uh, we can coordinate to have maybe somebody come out to you, uh, or you can come out here. It sounds like you're on the East Coast, so maybe having somebody come out to you would be a little bit easier. 
Uh, Anna asked about maintenance. Okay, great question. Let's talk about the Empower first. Like I said, the Empower doesn't need to be used every day. But this is essentially your maintenance. Once a week, once a week, there's something called a maintenance station in the printer. It's where the printhead rests when it's not being used. There are little seals on the maintenance station. Over the course of the week, ink will build up on the seals and it will break the seal from the printhead, which causes air and contaminants and dust to touch the tip of the printhead. Now, we don't want that. So once a week, you've got to clean that maintenance station like it's brand new. Okay, make it look brand new. Get all that extra ink off there. Get everything. Make it look brand new. Right next to the maintenance station is your wiper blade. Pull out that wiper blade and get all that extra ink build off, uh, off the wiper blade. Clean that up. Then take the cleaning applicators that we give you and clean the bottom of your print head. You can literally just wipe the bottom of the print head. You, if you do that as thoroughly as possible, it'll take you about 15 minutes. But do that once a week. Okay? It'll prolong all the components in your printer. It'll make everything work a lot better. You'll have um, uh, an easier time printing. It makes all the difference in the world cleaning those three things. Right? Now, when you're working on the printer, like say you haven't used it right, a few days. So what you do is you go up to the printer. You do a nozzle check. You make sure all your nozzles are firing. If all your nozzles are firing, start printing. Okay? If they're not firing, do a, what we call a light clean. It's just automated. You hit a button, light clean, cleans, do another nozzle check. Your nozzle should be perfect. Then you start printing, and that's it. Okay? Antigen has the least amount of maintenance out of any other direct to garment printer made, period. Uh, Sergio asked, does it only print on flat surfaces? Can it print on polishers? Yes and yes. You can, um, you're, you're better off with flatter surfaces. The curvature of it doesn't really, uh, of surfaces doesn't really uh, work well, although um, our hat platen does take a curved surface and make it flat. Um, and yes, it can print on polo shirts, uh, no problem. It can print on any fabric, really. Uh, Mike asked about uh, metals and plastics. How durable is the ink? You know, Mike, it's pretty durable. There are ways to, and different kinds of ink that are traditionally used when printing on um, uh, plastics and things like that. Um, what I would recommend is using some sort of uh, post primer after you've printed to increase the durability of it. There's all sorts of different things that you can get, acrylics and things like that, sprays that uh, will help with that. Um, so feel free to jump out, you know, go to your Home Depot and, and, and play around with it. You can probably uh, come up with some pretty cool ideas. Okay. Um, I uh, just started a company. It's been doing well, but we want to invest in an Anajet, but I've been hearing questions about heat presses. We still need a heat press with a printer. I had the impression that we just print the design of the shirt, and that would be it. Can you elaborate? Yes. Uh, uh, Liliana, um, when you print a ink on a fabric, um, if you just let it air dry, it'll dry, but as soon as you wash it, all the ink will wash out. Um, the heat is there to bind the ink to the fabric. Uh, it's just like in screen printing. When you screen print a shirt, you throw it through a dryer at the very end. By kicking that ink up to a certain temperature, all chemically, the ink starts to bind with the fabric and all the water gets evaporated out of it. That way, when you wash it, it doesn't wash out. So to answer your question, yes, you do need a heat press uh, or a tunnel dryer, any type of curing mechanism, because you want to make sure that when you give that product to your customer, it lasts in the wash. Uh, Chad asks, is the maintenance on the Sprint the same as the Empire? Chad, it's not. Um, the weekly maintenance is the same, but the, uh, the Sprint needs to be used on a daily or bi-daily basis. You got it, you, because it doesn't have that circulation system like the Empower does that we talked about earlier. You got to use it, and the, or you got to circulate the ink, and the only way to really circulate the ink is to use the printer. So don't let the printer sit with ink in it for longer than a day or two. Uh, Renee's, uh, what dates are you going to be at Sign World? It's, um, what was it, December 21st through the 23rd? Is that what the slide said, I believe? Uh, Chad, uh, how long can the printer go without that, that? I'm assuming you're talking about the Sprint like we just did. I, I wouldn't let a Sprint printer sit longer than two days without using it. So, I mean, go ahead and let it sit over the weekend, no big deal. But don't go longer than two days without using the Sprint. The Empower, just do your weekly maintenance. You'll be in good shape. 
Uh, Mike, you want to copy the presentation? No problem, man. I can get that for you. Do me a favor and shoot me an email, guys, just so that you have it. Here, I'm going to um, I'm typing my email in here. Um, shoot me an email with what you need, and I will get you. Um, I, I will get you everything that you need uh, after this is over. Real quickly, though, too, just for everybody that's that's on listening to this, because you're part of this webinar, you all get preferred pricing. We have you in the system as being part of it. So, call your regional manager and or whoever you're working with and let them know that uh, you're interested in a printer and they'll give you preferred pricing for being part of the webinar attendees. Uh, price, <laughs> we haven't even talked about that. All right, good call. Uh, so the Sprint is 13950 The Empower 5 is 29950 and the Empower 10 is 39950 Now you guys, like I said, will all get preferred pricing. So make sure you call your RM or whoever your contact is here and uh, and tell them that you were on the webinar and that you want the preferred webinar pricing, and they'll be able to get that for you. Okay. Any other questions out there? Looks like we covered everything. Um, guys, I, 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 did everybody get my email? All right. If you didn't get my email, it's my first initial A, my last name. It's T as in Tom, I. P is in Paul, R is in Robert, E is in Edward, at anajet.com. Email me what you need, and I'll make sure I get it out to you. All right, I think that's it, guys. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. I really appreciate everybody jumping on. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you need anything else, please feel free to email me directly. I'll make sure I answer those questions. Uh, again, though, guys, thanks again so, so much for jumping on. I hope uh, it wasn't too boring for you, uh, and I'll be happy to, uh, to get you everything that you need. Um, much appreciated, and I hope you guys all have a good rest of the day and a, and a happy, happy Thanksgiving.